I've had to defend my life on multiple occasions. I've been stabbed. As I said, I've been licked up by hammers. I had a bleed on my brain. I nearly died. My name is Esco. Where where did you grow up originally, mate? I kind of grew up everywhere. I was in care. It was all just like moving all the time. You get me? I wasn't really anywhere. I was more everywhere. You get me? Because I was in foster homes. I was adopted and then I was put into foster homes. You get me? So and then they wouldn't last very long. How how would you say your childhood was? My whole life has been in special education. So I've been held down and restrained since I was like five years old. You get me? They, when you when you're young they start you off and there's a chair behind you and then they sit you down on the chair and then they hold your arms like this. That's when you're young, it's like a class one hold. And then as you move up you get older and you go to a special school and a secondary school. Then you're getting rugby tackled, bruv. The rugby tackling you to the floor, they're doing thumb locks on you, and that's because you're apparently disabled. I was diagnosed with ADHD, so I wasn't in normal schools. I went to these other schools where it was like a special residential schools. Do you know what I mean? So it was just I, every step of the way, it's like it was all just leading to prison. Do you know what I mean? Because when I was young and I was in this place that a quiet room that it was called, and because they couldn't lock the door, they'd shut the door and hold it. You're legally not allowed to lock a kid in a room. So there'd be a camera on top of the on top of the roof and it was a square white room. And then they'd hold the door shut so that if you kicked off in class, they'd drag you from there into that quiet room, throw you in. What do you think that does to a youth man or to a young person? You get me? What does that do to me? That teaches me that like nobody's gonna help you. you know what I mean, I used to <laughs> I used to scream that I was wanting out. They wouldn't let me out. I remember one time I had to piss in the corner. They made me mop up my own piss as a youth. So this is why I'm so fucking spiteful and angry. Because every single thing that happened to me should not have been happening. People were saying this about like the 80s. When it happened to me in 2005. Do you know what I mean? Happened to me in 2012, 2013 before I got secured up. Being in a residential school. Getting handcuffed at school. Getting, like The feds coming to school. The police coming to school. Arresting me at school for running away. Do you know what I mean? Every, every time, running away for residential units, running away for care homes, feds on you. So it just teaches you, and you, you're already away from people, you know, you don't have no family. You're in a care home with a bunch of people who do have family and they don't behave. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, I don't know. When was your first exposure to gangs? My first exposure to gangs was in 2006, when I was at in Ladywell. And uh, I was young, and there was a gang fight going on at the back of my house. And me and my foster brother at the time, we went round and watched it, and we ran with the team at the time, which was like Ladywell. I don't know, it was Ladywell young team at the time. What What was your like uh, initiation into the gang? Well, it's not really initiation, and it like once you move to an area, you just automatically start. Like I I find anyway that I've automatically just been associated with the bad people wherever I've went, do you know what I mean? Or the people who have nobody or the people who are up to fuckery, you get me? So, not really gangs, but like my best mate got done for like double murder, you get me? My best friend, who I used to, when I was in care homes, I used to run away <coughs> and stay at his dad. His dad used to feed me coca noodles in a, in a tub and I used to prefer that than going back to my crazy ass foster carer, so I used to run away every night and go up there and be with them, even though, <coughs> even though it being said that they were like the worst people where I lived, but I didn't see them like that. I used to run away from somebody who was getting paid to look after me, to the worst people apparently in the area, well they are apparently, you get me? But then he got done for that. It's not, it's not so much gang life, it's more area life, you get me? It's where you're from. We weren't running around thinking we were drillers when we were younger, you get me? We were just doing what we needed to do. I remember we went to an illegal rave <clears throat> and then all the all the boys from Nightridge were fighting all the boys from Craig's Hill and that was just because we were just there at that moment, you get me? So we just done it, you get me? And then all the poles were on the bridge, we were fighting with the poles on the bridge. So it's not really like gang, it's, it's more just like area where you're from, you get me? And obviously because I wasn't from anywhere, I used to go to all these areas and end up getting in fights with all these people. Do you know what I mean? I have to prove myself. Do you get me all the time? I'll be getting moved yearly. So, 
Yeah, that's that. Have you uh, have you lost anyone to the streets? Like yeah, I've lost loads of people to the streets. <laughs> like as I said, my my best friend was done for a double murder when I was probably about fourteen, fifteen. Um, I've had mates murdered. My mate was stabbed to death in Glasgow. Um, I've had mates hang themselves. So I got a teardrop there from my best friend who hanged himself. Um, all of it, mate. People just dying left, right, and the centre, killing themselves. All like where I live, just people just killing themselves. I don't know. I don't know what it is, mate. You get me? They're just there's something in the water. I guess I, I don't know. They're just killing themselves all the time. I don't know why there's no like more being done about it. Same with drug deaths. Losing all my mates to heroin and crap. You get me? So yeah. Do you ever look back on a like a specific night, event, or moment where you felt like it could have ended the same way for you? Yeah, definitely, mate. Listen, see, my whole life I could have made all these choices, man. And if I, I've made them all, this is what I'm saying, I've done it all. Do you know what I mean? And see, what the thing is, man, once you have an event like that, you can't, there's no turning back. Do you get me? So, like, you never see the world the same again. Do you get me? Once you've been stabbed or once you've been licked up by a mallet, do you get me? It changes you. Do you get me? You see people in a different way, you don't trust people, you get me? Because at the end of the day, I used to be trusting, and that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been so trusting. Because in both of them occasions, I've allowed that to happen by being too trusting and letting myself into certain situations. So it makes you cold, you get me? And you're not gonna associate with certain people, you're not gonna do certain things. Take us through that night, you said about your friend, what actually happened on the night of that? So basically, he went into the, apparently, apparently, he went into the first person's yard who was, a, I wouldn't say a respectable member of the community. He was known in the community and he was loved and people would take care of him and help him. Do you know what I mean? And uh, he went into his yard and he, they basically, they stabbed him up, demanded money off him. And this was in my other mate's yard. So he, they knew where he was. Right, and this is somebody that you would think was their friend. Do you know what I mean? Like, there was no reason for them to do anything to him. They went round to his yard, they stabbed him up in the yard, they duct taped him to a chair, they shoved a chair leg through his head and up his ass, stabbed him to death in the yard, dragged him out into the street, left him in the street, right, and then went up to the old geezer's yard, stuck him to a chair, stabbed fuck out him with a screwdriver, and see the boy that he done it with, right, I thought I was in a fight with him and he was on roids, right? This is this is where the whole thing happened. I was in a pub with my mates and he was roided up in this pub. And you got to remember, I just got out of a security unit. I was a wee guy, right? I thought I was big. This man's pure on roids, mate, right? And I'm in the toilet a pub. I'm not even meant to be drinking in this pub. That's what I'm saying about, right? We all just go to pubs when we're 13, 14, you get me? And we end up having fight. I was fighting with that cunt, mate, and he was on roids. And that's, that's why all this happened. He was roided out his nut. My mate went along with him, shook, because mate, he knew that this is the realness. He knew if he if he didn't even do it, he would have done him. You get me? And that's the realness. That's what nobody in the scheme wants to tell anybody. They try to portray them both as that. Nah, he was shook for him. You get me? So he went along with it. And that's how most murders happen. You know what I mean? I've got another mate who done that, went into a yard with somebody else, licked them up by a golf club, licked them up by knives and for what? Because you got told by somebody else that he done this to somebody else and then you got recruited by him. What, what, what's hard about that? Nothing. You know what I mean? So it was all, it was all like retaliation. It's not, even, it's not even retaliation. That's what I'm saying. When, when that other geezer got recruited, it's not even retaliation if you deep it. That's his beef. He didn't even know him. This is, this is how bad it is in Scotland. He didn't even know him. He just said, come round, we're going to chop him up. And then he's like, oh yeah, mate, I'm hard. I'm going to go down and chop him up. And then he done it. And then look at him now. Do you get me? 17 year, gone. Same as same as the other guys. They both got 40, 49 years combined together. 20, 23 and 28 years or something. Something like that. You get me? And it's all over the news. Everybody knows about it. You get me? Everybody knows that he was my mate. I don't care. <laughs> Would you say like substances were a big part of growing up, like drink, drugs, stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was introduced to substances like when I was really young, like probably about six or seven. I used to buzz gas, 
drink, like I used to steal wine from my parents, used to smoke cigarettes, Marlboro Reds. And this was back when I was with my adoptive parents, so like, like from a very young age, they used to say I was a poly substance misuser, which means that I'll take anything, you get me? But obviously now that's not the case, I just smoke weed and drink a bottle of rain on a Friday, you get me? So. Drugs are a big part of growing up. Have you ever been to prison and what was your experience with that? Well, I've, I've been to prison, I've been to secure units, I've been to mental hospitals. And what can you say, mate? It's, you're, you're locked up, you've, you're, you've got your liberty taken away. The, at the end of the day, man, everybody says they're going to be there for you and they're not. You get me, you're on your own. Prison's prison, isn't it? And the worst place that I would say is like secure units when you're young. When you go to prison and you're an adult, man, you just do your thing, get out, you get me? But when you're young, it's... The secure units in that I was in was... They were like proving grounds, you get me? You're fighting every day, every single day, you get me? And I went in there if you're skinny. And when I came out, people were like, what happened to you, man? I came out a different person. And then that makes you ready for jail. It's like, it's like the wee preschool to jail. So but all my life, I've just been ready to go. It's just been a matter of time. You get me? So, yeah, but it's no good, is it? And, and do you feel like that changed you? I feel like my whole life's changed me. I feel like you're set up from the day you're born. See, my life, people don't try to just fuck me up. I've had, my whole life, people just try and kill me all the time. Every fight that I've ever been in from young, because I'm not from the area, right, has been me v five man, right? And these men think they're tough, you get me? And now we're all growing up, I go back and then I see what's happening and they're all my friend now, you get me? Whereas they all used to jump me when I was younger, they all used to do all these things and now I'm Esco and I'm rapping, oh, do you remember me? I do remember you, bruv, you get me? So I've had to defend my life on multiple occasions, I've been stabbed. As I said, I've been licked up by hammers, I had a bleed on my brain, I nearly died and I had to just jump back up and be like, it's all good, you get me? Whereas it's not all good. You get me, that's no, that's no what you want, bruv. You get me, because I was alone, I was out there fighting every day for my life. Every day, bruv. Fighting to, I used to have to steal food. I used to have to raid bins to eat, bruv. You get me, like, all the out-of-date food that would go in the bins, I used to have to go and raid them bins. With my mate who got done for double murder, while I was in foster care, staying with a family that's meant to look after me, I had to eat out of bins. Do you know what I mean? Because they wouldn't feed me, they wouldn't look after me. They were on fuckery, you get me? So, I've been fighting for my life forever. Had people try to set me on fire, had people try to crash their car into me. Once you've, I, once you've been to that place maybe where you can't even remember what happened, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just gone. And then you've got some nurse telling you, like, mate, you need to go back into the bed. You've been hit by a hammer, you know what I mean? And your ears are bleeding. And the, the, literally, brother, was the, the secure unit I was in, there was a, a pastor, not a priest, and the priest was there when I woke up in the morning. That's too much, mate. Do you know what I mean? Because he was like, we thought you were going to die. You get me? But the thing is, man, once you have an event like that, you can't, there's no turning back. Do you get me? So, like, you never see the world the same again. You get me? Once you've been stabbed, or once you've been licked up by a mallet, you get me? It changes you. You get me? You see people in a different way, you don't trust people, you get me? Because at the end of the day, I used to be trusting, and that wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been so trusting. Because on both of them occasions, I've allowed that to happen by being too trusting and letting myself into certain situations. So it makes you cold. You mentioned about you know, eating out of bins and stuff like that. What are some of the ways that you overcome those challenges and what, what was like your hustle mentality? How did that develop? Well, basically what happened was when I when I used to look at other people who were the same age as me and I used to get angry and think like, why do they get this and I don't? That's where the hustle, that's where the drive comes from. Because why me? You get me? And there's nobody else that's going to change that apart from me. And I seen, see like eating out of bins and stuff, I seen that as like, I got taught that by my mate who was trying to help me at the time because I couldn't go back to there. So he taught me that hustle. And I understand that's not really a hustle, but when you're young and you can't eat, that was a hustle to me, you get me, so as I could eat at the end of the night. And then that just escalated into just doing all sorts of fuckery, you get me? I just took what I needed any time from anywhere because I had nothing and nobody, what, like, nothing. Do you know what I mean? 
literally nothing. So I'd be out every night just getting, taking what I wanted. You get me? Whether that was from a pharmacy, whether that was from a shop, whether that was from a house, anywhere. I had no no qualms about doing anything back in the day. No qualms. You get me? House, anywhere. What was like your most unique way to make money? Probably stealing drink when I was young and, and selling cigarettes in school. You get me? Because I used to sell cigarettes in school, 50 pence a cigarette. So that was probably my most unique way of making money. I don't know, maybe when I was younger, because I was a proper hustler, I used to uh, go and cut grass. I used to wash cars, used to chat people's door. And this is when I was young. You get me? And I was in a foster home. I used to chat the door. So, and I used to be, uh, and they all used to, I used to get money all the time. I used to shape stones, even as a wee guy. I used to shape these stones, man, into things, right? I used to chat people's door and be like, listen, do you want to buy these stones? Like, that's what I'm saying, bruv. They buy the stones, bruv. You get me? So I knew from young, I was like, mate, I can, I can sell anything. You get me? So I just adapted that for my whole life. I've been, like, since young, hustling since young. I can remember I found loads of crystal when I was a wee guy. For, this is when I was in my adopted uh, family's house and it was in a big shed out the back. And I took this, this crystal and I stood on the side of the road and sold all this crystal vases and shit. Mate, cunts must have thought they were having a bargain of a century, mate, because I was selling these things for like £2 a pop, you get me? So, yeah, I, I've always been a hustler, you get me? So, yeah, and going from one extreme to the other where you're adopted and you're living on a farm, right? But they're doing all sorts of fuckery to you. You get kicked out of there and then you're in the hood in a foster home, mate, where, where they don't look after you. They're not, do you know what I mean? They're, they're, they're like, they, they take all my money. They never gave me my clothing, my clothing money or that. I stayed in a good foster home before and I used to be kitted out and all like the best gear and that. She used to take me shopping, do you know what I mean? Feed me up good. I just ate whatever I wanted to eat. You get me? So that you, you've like been in and out of the prison system and in and out of, you know, young offenders and stuff like that. Do you have a specific memory or like day that, you know, really sticks out in your mind? I don't know. The first experience I had was like a secure unit. And that was fucking crazy. Like, I've been to jail, I've been to adult jail, and I couldn't tell you one story from adult jail because people just chill out and do their time. When I first went there, I tried to fucking do that YO behaviour in there, and I got told by a lifer, bro, like, if you do that, man, somebody's just going to come and fucking wipe you out, you get me? And it's not going to be like, a group of people it's going to be just some lifer that can't be bothered listening to you anymore do you know what I mean you need to change your attitude so the memories that stick out for me is in being insecure <coughs> and young offenders and just having riots and fucking try to stab people and just I used to make shanks and when I was insecure and I used to try and stab people snap CDs snapping CDs off people's heads having fight with fights with fully grown men when you're a kid all the shit that's affected me, nothing's affected me as I've been an adult. All my shit is from when I was a kid. I see that as I couldn't actually fucking defend myself. And I had to, you get me, against fully grown men. Screws coming in your cell and being like, oh, um, you've got this, you've got that. And you'd have to fight because it would be down your balls. You'd have to fight. Do you know what I mean? So you wouldn't get it or getting all your electrical stripped out of your room or being on suicide watch because you try to hang yourself. Do you know what I mean? I'm covered heap to toe, man, in scars all over my whole body. I just cutting myself because I can't, because I didn't know how to regulate my emotions. You get me? And then you get fucking psyched off and sent to a loony bin. <laughs> you get me? So, yeah. Have you ever tried to take your own life? <laughs> I've, I have on more than one occasion, uh, loads of times. Um, from cutting myself to hanging myself, to taking overdoses, to taking heroin overdoses. Just, I don't know, man. I've, I, yeah, I have. A few times, yeah. But I don't think I was trying to kill myself now that I look back on it. I think that I was just hurting too much. You get me? And, uh <laughs> No family is safe, me, me and bro adopted Yeah, it was a kid, I was a baby We were started from the family Anarchy, that's a parody Got blown homes, bitchin'
own sweet for some savage in brutality I'm insane Ripless with high taste, duality at my base I'm replaced by no legs, I spot man's fakeness Now you think I'm famous, I rap yellow back for ages I had homies in my trainers Now I ate pages, I go stacks in the yellow pages Now they wait, smoking strain, taste about that greatness Now that game shit, no depth I'm ready to take the final words, mate Nah, not really. Just uh, stay in school, man. Don't do drugs, you get me? And don't, don't try and be something you're not. Because at the end of the day, you're yourself, aren't you? You get me? That's it. You're, you're you. Your parents created you to be you. So just carry on your family name and be in some pride and honour. You get me? That's all I can say.